Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a good day and have had a good week, and hopefully we'll all together uh, have a wonderful Shabbos. Last week, the billionaire Richard Branson flew up to space or just up to about the border of space, and this week, uh, his fellow billionaire, Jeff Bezos, uh, soared even higher into the weightlessness of space. And these actually were really quite incredible events. Human beings have already gone to space, but this marks the beginning of a new era when uh, even if not everyone, but uh, the wealthy soon will be able to travel to space. It will be something more normalized uh, that human beings can go and enjoy uh, space beyond uh, the atmosphere, the gravity of Earth. And there can be many reactions to this. A person can be inspired, such an incredible accomplishment. You see what human beings can do if they're determined. Hundreds of human beings working together, what they can build person can have such a positive uh, reaction. Others have reacted more cynically, seen these as uh, joy rides of the billionaires. Um, uh, in certain presentations, I also hear echoes of Migdal Bavel, of the human beings trying to ascend and conquer the heavens from God. Uh, but I'd like to share with you a different reaction, a different thought connected, inspired by these events and witnessing, watching these people go up to space, and something connected to this week's Parsha. In the Parsha, Moshe Rabbeinu tells the Jewish people that if they will observe the mitzvos, uh, the greatness of the Torah, the greatness of Hashem, the greatness of the Jewish people, he claims, uh, will be clear to all. And the nations themselves will declare, Ki mi goi gadol. How great is this people, the Jewish people? Ki mi goi gadol. Asher lo elokim krovim love, whom God is close to. As God is close to us whenever we call him. What exactly does that mean that Hashem is close to us? And we notice that the Pasuk does not claim that Hashem answers us, uh, agrees to our request, or even answers at all every time we call to him. But he is close to us every time that we call to him. I'll share with you a fascinating passage from a, the Talmud Yushalmi in Masachas Brachos. Commenting, interpreting this very verse. The Talmud there writes as follows. Amar of Pinchas, B'Shem, Rabbi Huda Bar Simon. Avodah pagan idols, Nireis, Krova, they seem close, Ve'ena ala rechoka, but in truth they are far. My time, as the verse says, Yisau al Katif, a person will carry their idol on their shoulder. They feel the physical presence, the touch of the idol. Sof Tavar, by the end of the day, Hello, ho, imo, babayis. His God is with him in his house. But he cries out until he dies, and he is not heard. At the end of the day, the idol is far. The idol cannot do anything. Hashem, at first glance, seems very distant. Vain karov mimeno ben truth. There is no one closer than him. Dharma Levi has Levi taught meha aretz va'ad the rakia. Mahalach chamesh meo shana. From the land to the first firmament, it is a distance that requires 500 years travel. And from the first firmament to the next firmament, is another 500 year journey. And the thickness of each firmament is a 500 year journey. And so too between and for every firmament, and there's a tradition, there were seven heavens, seven firmaments, See how distant, how far God is from his world that he created from us. According to one calculation, based on the what the Gemara says elsewhere, is the average distance the person walks in a day, comes out that God is, so to speak, 70 million miles away. That is the distance of the heaven from the earth. Much greater than Jeff Bezos or, or Branson traveled this week or last. And yet, the Talmud continues, And yet a person comes to show. And he stands behind the pillar at the tender. And he prays with a whisper. And God hears the prayer. As the Pasuk says, And Chana was praying quietly. Just moving her lips. No one could hear her voice. But God heard her prayer. And so too with every creature. Every human being, when a person will pour out his heart, as the psukim continue, 
Al taster panachli, many do not hide your face. Beom sarli, my day of, day of trouble. Hate elai aznecha, tilt your ear towards me. Beom akra, the day that I call. As the Talmud puts it, Ka'adam ha-mesiach ba'ozan chavero v'ushamei. It is like one person whispering directly into the ear of his friend. V'chiyeshel cha'elo ka'karov mizak. Can there be a God closer than this? Shu karov lo v'yosav kepel ozan. He is close to us like a mouth to an ear. When we pray, Hashem hears us. The Talmud Bavli, in his presentation, this idea says, therefore, it is forbidden. One is not supposed to daven out loud. One is supposed to daven the silent Shemun Esrei quietly, not just to disturb others, even when you're at home. We daven quietly. We whisper. The Talmud Bavli says, one who davens loudly displays a lack of faith. Miktane Amunahu. The Talmud Bavli says that one who prays uh, loudly, Hamagbiya kol so, one who raises his voice, in the private personal prayer of Shimon Asri, Harezim and Yivya Shaker is like one of the false prophets, which is described when they confronted, battled Eliyahu and Hara, Carmel, Vaikruba, Kol Gadol, the false prophets, idolatrous uh, prophets. They screamed with a great voice, believing that their God was far away, the power is far away, they had to traverse the distance and reach God. But that's not what we believe. We believe the definition of prayers we've discussed is Omeli Fnamel, standing in the presence of Hashem. That means we're not sending an email up to heaven. That means we're directly standing in the presence of Hashem. If we are here in the shul, in this room, in our house, that means Hashem is here. We whisper to demonstrate and to cultivate a feeling that the one listening to us is right here, is right outside of our mouths. It's like Hashem's ear, so to speak, is, is a millimeter. As soon as the sound exits our mouth, that is where Hashem is. That is how close Hashem is. And that's what the psukim in this week's parsha mean. It does not mean that Hashem will always agree to our requests. It does not mean that Hashem will always answer our prayers. That's not what the Pasuk says. But the Pasuk says that whenever you call out Hashem, Karub Hashem l'chol, Karub l'chol, Ashir Yikru, Ba'amet, is to say in Ashri, if we, if we call out to Him in faith, with a with with a, a believing heart, with trying to sense and feel Hashem's presence, then He will be close. He is there. He is present. He's right outside of our mouths, right in front of our face. That is an incredible uh, experience to remind ourselves of, to try to strengthen, to cultivate. Uh, again, prayer we do every day, and so it can become rote. But this is the essence of prayer as our tradition sees it, to feel Hashem's closeness, His presence. And uh, as incredible as it is, as incredible as it is, to have seen the heights that... Uh, these examples of humanity over the past two weeks, how high they have gone up. So as incredible as that is, we know that every time Hashem prays, Hashem descends from an even greater height and comes down uh, to be each with each and every one of us uh, as close as possible. As we say in the Parsha, Ki mi goi gadol. it is quite an incredible thing that we believe this is possible, that we believe every... A uh, Jew can and does experience this. Kashem elokenu, b'chol kareinu elav. How close Hashem is any time that we call out to Him. Kashabas everyone, and Shabbat Shalom.